السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us And to grant us every form of goodness, ameen my beloved brothers and sisters, many times in life we fail to progress because we are stuck in the past. And this is not only true when it comes to our own faults and our own sins, but even with others. At times it is in the best of your interests to let go of something that looks like you cannot let it go. But in order for you to progress, you must let it go. Imagine a person who is owed a thousand rands. And then, and obviously, if he is owed a thousand rands, legitimately, he can ask for it. He can pursue it. Legally, he can actually take up a lot in order to get it. But is it worth the drama? That's the question. Why should I pay 10,000 rands in order to get back a thousand rands? One might say, well, it's to prove a point. You pay a price to prove points. Remember that. We as Muslims are taught that you must always weigh the pros and cons and allow the lesser of the two evils if you have no third option. Remember that. And this is something very interesting because... Many people are bogged down in life. They simply cannot move forward. You lost your job, you were fired unceremoniously, and you want to get back at your old boss. By that occupation that you've now engaged in of getting back to your old boss, you have stopped your eyes from looking ahead at jobs that are glaring you in your face simply because you did not move on. It's okay. You're not the first person to lose your job. You're going through a tough time. Trust me, we've all been through tough times. It might last a year. It might last five years. It might last 10 years, but it will last longer if you don't progress and you don't look at the future. Shine your eyes and take a look at the glass in front of you that shows you the whole road that you don't even want to walk on. We become lazy and sad simply because We've had something traumatic that happened in our lives. Maybe a scare in our health. Maybe a robbery we've had. Maybe someone we've lost. May Allah grant our loved ones Jannah. Or it could be anything else. My brothers, my sisters, I am here to tell you that it's not the end of the road. Look up and move forward. If, it, if at all you want to look back, it should only be to learn a lesson. But not to get stuck in it in such a way that you don't move forward. Remember this. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at the time of the victory of Makkah, which is a powerful example, he came into Makkah with an army of tens of thousands. And what happened? The people of Makkah who had harmed the Muslims, they had usurped their wealth, they had abused them, they had killed many of them, and so on. Here comes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he asks them the famous question, O people of Quraysh, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? Imagine someone who's harmed to that degree. I don't even want to get into it, but it's very bad. And then here comes the messenger with all the power saying, what do you think I'm going to do to you today? Imagine if a guy today from amongst us had to tell another who has killed from his family or usurped the wealth, driven them out of their homes for years on end, and he comes one day powerfully. What do you think I'm going to do to you today? They looked at him and says, you're a good man, the son of a good man. Oh, now suddenly I'm a good man. You see, all these years I was not a good man. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Al Ali Al Azim. Now he, they said, Well, you know, we expect goodness. What would we expect? He says, Idhabu fa antumutulaka. No retribution today. Go, you are free. I'm going to tell you what Yusuf alayhi salam told his brothers. No retribution against you. Go, you are free. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. 
if the Prophet ﷺ wanted, he could have actually got every single one of them back. Every one of them. But no, there was a bigger picture. Let's move forward. Let's progress. We have an ummah to serve. We have families. We have relatives here. We have so much here. And you know what? A lot of these people are not Muslim. By us showing them the true teachings of Islam, they will enter the fold of Islam. And that's exactly what they did. Today, when people look at us, Muslims turn away from Islam. Because they let down by us. May Allah not do that to us. Today when people look at us, they are discouraged. Today we break relations of our families, ourselves. Here is the Prophet ﷺ saying, you know what? Let's make peace. Move forward from today. Don't go back. He never ever looked back. As a result, it was considered true victory. What is the true victory? Don't look back. Look forward. There is a lot to achieve. Yes, yes, yes. You need to understand if you were bitten from one angle, you will learn a lesson and not be bitten again from the same angle again. But at the same time, you need to know, just keep moving. I have a brother, very recent story, brother in Islam. He lost a job just before this COVID thing happened. And he told me, my brother, I want to get back at this these people, I know a lot about them and I really want to nail them. And I told him, my brother, instead of nailing people, you'd rather concentrate on yourself. By me nailing someone, it's not going to give me any goodness. Will it give you a job? No. You get a bad name, people won't want to employ you anyway. So what should I do? Look forward, make dua to Allah. Ask Allah, turn to Allah. He says, but I've been asking Allah for so many years for an increment and instead he's given me the loss of a job. You see, do you trust Allah's plan? That's the question. Do you trust Allah's plan? You've been making dua for an increment for so long. And suddenly you lost a job. So you think, look, Allah's doing the opposite. Subhanallah. I just told him, I said, brother, you know what? Consider this. If you're holding tight to a few coins with one hand and Allah wants to give you two handfuls of gold coins, the first thing he needs to do is to make you open this hand so that these coins go or at least your hands are now opened. In the process, you might lose these coins. Make dua, bear patience, don't worry. If the Prophet ﷺ went through it, who are we? We will go through even more. And he told me, well, that's the mantra that all of you guys utter. Whenever we are in difficulty, I said, well, we are taught that and you must believe that. Be convinced, don't ever leave Allah at the time of your hardship. Never blame Allah, no way. Allah tells you clearly, you have harm and evil, it's not my doing. It's yours or man's doing. Allah makes it clear that all this chaos and corruption and all nonsense you see on earth, it has become apparent because of the handiwork of mankind. You guys did it, not me. Allah says, don't blame me for the evil. People say, why does Allah allow murder? Who murdered? Was it not a human being? Why blame Allah for someone else's crimes? Well, then they might say, well, what was the sin of the innocent child who was murdered? You say, you know what? Allah will give justice, but there was someone who murdered the child. It's human beings who committed that crime. The fact that Allah knew it in advance does not make him guilty of being merciless when he is the most merciful. He says to us, I will provide for those who believe and those who don't believe. That's what he says in the Quran. In this world, I will provide for those who believe and those who don't believe. The difference is those who believe will have the hereafter. Those who don't believe, they won't have the hereafter because they don't believe in it. So I told this brother, I said, brother, make dua. And Allah will open your doors. And he says, okay, you know what? I'm a Muslim. I've been doing dua. I'm not going to leave it. But please make dua that Allah strengthen me. Trust me, COVID took over. As you know, life changed, I hope temporarily. And you know what? Subhanallah, this man suddenly struck gold. He was at the right place at the right time. And there was one deal that he did that was worth a lot. And it changed his life. It went through another and a third and a fourth and a fifth. And he tells me, please, please use me as an example to tell people, don't lose hope. I almost gave up. 
I lost my job in such a bad way, but that was definitely what you were saying, that Allah is opening your doors. Allah is opening your doors. I look forward. Instead, if I had gone back to nail my previous boss, I would have still been in that or on that path. Doing the same thing, trying to nail and I would be busy with this, losing money, going to this one, that one. But what I did is I focused on something that was right in front of me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened these doors. Why am I saying this? Today we're all going through struggles. All of us. Different levels of struggles. Remember my brothers and sisters, you're not alone. We're in it together. We all have challenges, myself included. Learn to help one another, learn to say a good word to one another, learn to be focused, work hard. A day will come when you will smile. Even if it is two years, four years. Another example, people going through divorce. Divorce is becoming like a trend, like a trend. You're married, you go to ask the guy, are you still married after two years? You say, if he says, yes, yes, you say, mashallah. Because you know, now it's like sort of uh, not the norm anymore. The norm is like, you married, awards. Say, subhanallah, may Allah grant us ease. It's not bad to actually be divorced for the right reasons or to divorce for the right reasons. But when it becomes a trend, it, it is scary. We are not prepared to sacrifice for one another anymore. We're not prepared to forgive one another anymore. We want a perfect human being who's spotless without any weaknesses. That's what we're looking for. Well, that you will only find in paradise if you ever get there. May Allah grant us Jannah. Now people say, I'm going to get the perfect spouse in Jannah. I say, are you even going to get to Jannah? That's a question. How can you say that? You're supposed to give us hope. I said, that's a statement of hope. Because when you start thinking, gosh, am I really going to get there? It will get you up for Fajr. But if you didn't think of it, that am I really going to get there? Wallahi, yesterday I had a question from someone, a silly question, very silly question. Someone asks me, will we be allowed to steal in Jannah? I mean, how far can your mind go? To be honest with you. How far can your mind go? Will you be allowed to kill in Jannah and steal in Jannah? Because if you can do anything there, like Allah says, you will be able to do anything. So I said, the pure mind will never ever think in those lines or on those lines in that direction. Never. My brothers and sisters, when divorce happens, it's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world. Perhaps it is a door for you to then get to someone else. Had you not been through your first relationship, you would never have gotten to this much, much better person that you subsequently got married to. See, I see a lot of people nodding here. Mashallah, what's going on here, guys? May Allah grant us ease. Allah open our doors. But the moral is never give up. We go through challenges. We go through hardship. Let's look forward. Let's progress. People sit and say, I'm going to fix this ex of mine. You know what? Just move on. By making someone else's life difficult, it's not going to make your life easy. Not at all. You want ease? Close a chapter, open a new one. Let's move forward. Thank Allah. Beautiful relationship and let's move. May Allah grant us goodness. So this is it. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ met with Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. When he came to Medina, and he wanted to declare his shahada. You know who Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhuma was. He had caused a lot of damage against the Muslims, especially in Uhud. He was well known. And so he says, O Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've got a problem. The issue is, you know what I've done against Islam and the Muslims. I'm about to accept Islam. What's going to happen? He wants to know. As Allah teaches, the Prophet Sallallahu told him, Ya Khalid, Innal Islam ayajubbu ma qabla. O Khalid, Islam will delete whatever happened, the bad that you did in the past. The same way Tawbah deletes the past. Also, if you were to revert or convert to Islam, your past bad is deleted. The good carries with. You know, they say when you go for Hajj, you return as pure as the day you were born. Do you know in reality, it is even purer than that? Why? Because... That purity is referring to sinlessness. That's what it's referring to. It's not referring to zero on your slate. When the Prophet ﷺ said, as pure as the day you were born, he means no sins next to your name. He doesn't mean nothing next to your name. Evidence of it is, what about all the good I did before I went for Hajj? 
it remains. Do you get the point? So the good remains, the bad is formatted, gone. This is something amazing. Whenever we talk of Hajj and Tawbah, we must remember, yes, it deletes, but it doesn't make you, you know, they say, I'm starting on a clean page. You're starting on a page that already has so much of goodness on it because not only is it clean, but it's clean from sin. It's full of the goodness you did. Allah says, if you changed your life, then we're going to bring back the bad. Oh, 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 oh. Allah says in the Quran, if you change your life, illa man taba wa amana wa amila amalan salihan. Three conditions. You make tawbah. Tawbah means to return to Allah. What's the difference between istighfar and tawbah? Istighfar is to ask Allah's forgiveness. Tawbah is to return to Allah by changing your ways. That's the difference. Tawbah is more loved by Allah because it is broader than istighfar. Istighfar, I said, oh Allah, forgive me. Tawbah is now my life changed. That's the difference. So Allah says, those who made that tawbah, they returned to me. And they believe, they worked on their connection with Allah, their belief, their iman. And thirdly, they did good deeds. Allah says, we're going to bring back those bad deeds. And we're going to convert them into good deeds on the scale. Simply because this person could have done the bad, but they didn't because of their love of me and their connection with me. So Allah says, because of that, I mean, look, a person who is on intoxicants, may Allah protect us and our offspring. A person on intoxicants who says, oh Allah, forgive me. And then the intoxicants are still available. But he says, I'm not doing this anymore. Allah says, we're going to bring all of that back and convert it. You know why? You only quit it for us. Nothing else. You could have done it. You can still do it. But because you love us and you know we said it's wrong and you did not do it. We love that action so much. We're going to show you. Subhanallah. That is Allah. So this is the type of relationship we must develop with Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will assist. Days come in our lives when my beloved brothers and sisters... We are so low that we feel, where is Allah? Do you know that the messengers before us and the pious people before us, they used to ask Allah, Oh Allah, when is your help going to come? They were shaken, they were tested left, right and center until the messenger and the people around him, with him, they said, when is the help of Allah going to come? Allah says, be patient. Allah, inna nasr Allah qari. Be patient. Allah's help is near. Allah's help is near. I remember sitting with one scholar and he said, every dua is heard by Allah. Every single dua is heard by Allah. It's a matter of time for that dua to come and plug in. Some people, it's a few days. Some people, it's months. Some people, it's years. Don't ever think that Allah did not accept your dua. Never. All of us, if you sit and think about some duas you've made in your life that happened five years later, it happened ten years later, but you don't realize it came. It definitely came when the time was right. That's Allah's plan. Trust Allah. We were talking about Jannah. Sometimes we tend to forget that we need to work towards Jannah rather than arguing about what we're going to be getting in Jannah. Like I say, look at the path. You can see it's there. You know it's there. And you know the destination is also punched in. You just follow the path. Don't worry about now when I get there, this, when I get there, that. The other day I took my children somewhere and I punched it on the GPS. And we are following the GPS. It says turn left. It says turn right. It says continue. We did exactly that. Knowing in our hearts that you know at the end of the day we're going to get there. And when we get there, we'll see what there is. There might be restrictions. They might not. They might not even let us in. It might be closed, even though it says it's open because, you know, times have changed, right? Wallahi, our conviction in the GPS of Allah should be far stronger than that. Far stronger. Don't worry what you're going to get. I would never bother about what exactly I'm going to get in Jannah. What I'm bothered about is for me to get there. That's all. And that should be the case with all of us. Worry about getting there. They say, even if you are the last person to enter Jannah, you should be excited. You should, hey, I made it. Subhanallah. No matter where, what? 
Allahu Akbar. I have little children ask me sometimes, you know, if I'm in Jannah on one level and another person is in Jannah on another level and I wish to meet them or they wish to meet me, what will happen? I said, Allah will make it happen in a way that I can't explain to you. But inshallah, when we get there, we'll just nod our heads and say, hey, it happened. You see, I don't know. I just know it will happen. And I know that Allah can keep you in a certain way. You know, there's a very interesting uh, uh, hadith that comes to my mind. A very interesting. It says, whoever has had intoxicants, meaning that whoever has had the, the intoxicating wines of the dunya will not be having the wines in Jannah. Meaning, say they are forgiven and they change their lives and whatever. So now here comes a man. He says, hey, I had a bad life in the past. I used to drink. And you know, now I've changed my life and inshallah I'm looking forward to Jannah, but why won't I have the alcohol, meaning the, the, the wines, it's called wines, it's not intoxicating. The one in Jannah is not intoxicating. Why won't I have it in Jannah? Imagine I'm, it's going to be something that I'm going to want. And when I want it and Allah is going to say no, doesn't it negate another, another verse of the Quran which says, once you get into Jannah, you get what you want. So I said the best explanation of the ulama is something simple. Allah removes from your entire system even the thought of it. You won't think of it. I mean, if you loved something and you got into a place where there's some things billions of times better than that, would you even think of that? You wouldn't even want it. It won't even cross your mind perhaps. One day, years later in the dunya, we might think about it. In the akhirah, Allah will occupy you with so much of goodness it's not going to come. Again to the moral, the whole topic of today, to instill hope in the hearts of the people by telling them, don't get bogged down with the past. Whether it's someone who did something to you, whether it's your own past, you need to look ahead, you need to move forward, and you need to understand, make the most of whatever Allah has given you. I end by telling you, my brothers, my sisters, those of us who have sinned against ourselves, and we have had a past, or we have done something evil, Turn to Allah before it is too late. Next week, we might not see some of us in the masjid. Next week. In fact, next week is too far. You can have a scare at any time. Anything could happen. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. You are good enough. You are definitely good enough. Just make amends. Get up, stand up and move. Move forward. Get up for salah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. If you falter once more, ask Allah's forgiveness again and again and again. And don't give up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us and grant us goodness. I pray that the next time we meet each other, we will be in a better condition. Today we are in a better condition than we were yesterday. Alhamdulillah. Please seek the forgiveness of Allah. I believe that there is definitely something wrong with us. That's what I believe. There is definitely something wrong with us. Imagine Makkah, Medina, the Masajid, everything being affected in this way. We need to revisit our link with Allah. There is definitely something wrong with us. And don't point the fingers at others. It's me. I need to help myself, improve myself. Life is so short. I have had a lot of people, and I'm sure you may have, whom I've known. Suddenly, they know more. Where did they go? Back to Allah. It's a matter of a few days and you could go. It would be a blessing to have started the day I died with Fajr and a little recitation of the Quran. And then with Dhuhr, if your death was written after Dhuhr. Or then with Asr, if your death, death was written after that and so on. May Allah bless every one of us and grant us strength, the ability to change, the ability to help others at a time of need and the ability to continue on the path with hope until we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.